About a million and a half Americans suffer from a neurologic disorder called Parkinson's disease. In the past, doctors relied on drugs to treat it. Now, UNC doctors are using a relatively new type of surgery. A story tonight from health reporter Prashant Nair. 68-year-old Elizabeth Moore of Chapel Hill can do household chores today that used to be difficult. In this UNC clinic video shot three months before her surgery, notice the shakiness or tremor in her right hand and right leg. Symptoms of Parkinson's include loss of balance, tremor, rigidity, and trouble speaking, among other signs. Elizabeth's condition improved thanks to a surgical treatment called deep brain stimulation. This is the region of the brain into which surgeons implant electrodes during deep brain stimulation surgery. Current from the electrodes short circuits brain activity in this region and that's what helps patients control their symptoms. We insert electrodes into areas of the brain that are overactive, trying to reduce their activity to a normal level of activity, uh, which will then, in the case of a Parkinson's patient, for instance, reduce their tremors and reduce their rigidity. Moore says the result is... Less pain, better posture, less tremor. I'm taking no medication whatsoever. In deep brain stimulation, wires from the brain electrodes snake their way under the skin and connect to a pacemaker implanted beneath the shoulder. The pacemaker delivers current that helps dampen the shakiness Parkinson's patients suffer. Moore's doctor says it's too early to tell if surgery will permanently erase her symptoms, but Moore says so far she's satisfied with the surgery. In Chapel Hill, I'm Prashant Nair, Carolina Week. The surgery does have pitfalls. About 8% of patients get an infection because of the procedure, and 1% suffer a stroke. Ever find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time? Don't panic, because now there are more students certified to aid in emergency situations. These pharmacy students recently completed a CPR training course called by seasoned, taught by seasoned experts. Participants watched instructional videos, correctly checked for pulses, rehearsed various breathing techniques, and they learned how to perform chest compressions. Pay attention and take a deep breath because your next one might just save a life. Controversy continues on campus after a biology professor told his embryology class that older mothers should abort fetuses that have Down syndrome. Professor Albert Harris's comments have sparked debate on campus about what professors say to their students in class. Harris, a 35-year veteran at UNC, says he made the comments to start discussion in his class, and he didn't mean to be offensive. Recycling is one of the best things you can do for the environment. Reporter Lib Curley gives a closer look at one Carlboro resident's creative conservation efforts. Mike Roig makes a living turning scrap into sculpture in his home studio in Carlboro. The majority of his pieces are industrial waste welded into art. I wind up feeling like I kind of retire these things to some kind of aesthetic uh, uh, blissful old age that uh, they earned by going out and serve doing some kind of functional service out His yard is his gallery, a city of steel where anyone can walk up and purchase a piece. Some of them stick around for a long time and just when I think, well, I guess I'm just going to live with that one forever, somebody will come along and fall in love with it. Others of them dis out of the, disappear out of the yard so fast I hardly have time to absorb exactly what I learned from making them. This stainless steel sculpture is going to a park outside Atlanta, and a bit of Chapel Hill is going with it. All the, uh, the birds in there actually are all cut out of old hospital trays from UNC hospitals. <laughs> Roig says living in Cobro has helped his craft. We're fortunate that right here there's a, there's a big community, not only of artists, but of people who love art and want to make it a part of their lives. Most of the larger pieces of art go to public collections, and the smaller pieces usually go to private homes. But pieces like this could go either way. Big or small, Roig says his favorite piece is always... The one I'm working on. <laughs> In Carboro, I'm Lib Curley, Carolina Week. To see photos of many of Roig's cool creations, you can get to his website through ours, carolinaweek.org. As a resident of Chapel Hill, you've probably passed murals created by the artist Michael Brown. These images have pleased eyes and warmed hearts for almost two decades. But now, they're in need of a facelift because the murals have deteriorated. Many people see value in their restoration and have taken the first steps to reach that goal. So far, the Orange County Arts Commission and the Durham Partnership have given $3,000 to the cause. 
The estimated cost of the restoration is $40,000. And how about a little body restoration? The Student Recreation Center is a popular place for Carolina students, especially at this time of year. Spring break is just around the corner and there's not much time to get in shape for those swimsuits and spring wardrobes. Girls are slimming down and guys are toning up to possibly impress that special someone this spring break. SRC employees say they notice an increase in people at the gym in the weeks leading up to spring break. I feel like it, it picked up right after Christmas break because I think a lot of New Year's resolutions were happening and then it kind of tailed off and then it has picked up in the last couple weeks. The students are boosting their heart rates and pumping some iron in this spring break shape up season. This year Carolina launched a year-long series of art events to jumpstart conversation about the death penalty. Right now the Ackland Art Museum is displaying perspectives on public justice. Pieces from Andy Warhol and many others make up the collection. UNC will also host a lecture by Sister Helen Prejean next week. Sister Helen's work as a spiritual advisor to a man on death row inspired the play and film Dead Man Walking. If you're in the mood for a good laugh, you might want to check out Dirty South Improv's Comedy Festival. It's DSI's eighth festival. It kicked off Tuesday night and will run through Sunday. Each night will feature several themed comedy sets. The comedy groups come from a network of nearly 100 professional and college improv teams. What do you think about that one Pope guy talking? He's got a commanding lead with a giant hat on. <laughs> There are several awesome improv groups like DSI in and around Chapel Hill. Yeah, and uh, the DSI show should be a good one. We're joined now by weathercaster Katie Costa. Well, Katie, the weather can't decide if it's spring or winter. What's it going to do? Absolutely. It has been very nice for the past few days, but change is on the way. Are we going to see rain this weekend? I'll let you know after the break.